Hello? everybody this is new ideas in the opening uh, we switched class uh, it was announced that it was under 18 class but this is actually new ideas in the opening i hope everybody got the information so we will start in just one minute actually Yes, you can't see me because I'm not using a camera. I see somebody raised the hand. Can you all hear me? Please let me know in the chat. Yes, I'm glad that everything is working fine. And I believe, I believe we can start. Uh, so last week I was actually asked a question and this was the question. Uh, if I had some ideas here, new stuff, of course, that's a very hard question because the position is very solid. I have a few opinions, but no major, uh, you know, life-changing advice. Uh, anyway, there are a few things we can quickly look at. This is a very popular line. And what I noticed is that a few months ago, uh, it was in July last year, Nakamura played this Rook E8 decision, uh, which is a bit surprising. This is not really the main move. It's a logical move. White was Carlsen, so it's a very high level game. Um, so I figured there must be some reason why Nakamura chose Rook E8 instead of the more usual Queen A5. So I investigated Queen A5 too. I have to say, I don't really know why he didn't play like this. He played queen a5 earlier, and that's the main move. So this is something to, to wonder about. I don't have a clear explanation why, unfortunately. Um, now, a couple of moves are possible. Rook d1 is the main move, and we will discuss it later. There was a move knight d2, which is interesting. Uh, yes, again, uh, you can't see me because I'm not using a camera. It's just voice and chess. Uh, so here there are two logical moves. Queen d8 was very famous. It was played by Caruana in his match against Carson. It worked out in his game, but the feeling is that somehow white should be more, more pleasant. Uh, Rook D1 was played in that game. It's probably the correct move. I was just checking this long castle 
option as well. And yeah, uh, I believe this queen seven would be fine. Taking the pawn in the center is too risky and white king is not really safe. So we can have some ideas with like g4, g5, rook g1 to create an attack, but black is also making counterplay. Knight a5, for instance, is a very unusual but smart move, which in many variations will give black counterplay. So this is not really needed, but in this rook d1 line, we can argue that white might have some something at least. Uh, this was the game. Nevertheless, black is very solid and he managed to equalize in that game. Still, uh, this is not to everybody's taste, I guess. And this bishop b4 was actually played by Nakamura earlier. Uh, quite successfully, I have to say. Uh, now, knight b3 was played. Another direction is maybe bishop b3. And this is one of the small points I wanted to make. In this position, uh, both the pawn on d5 and the pawn on c3 are weaknesses, or targets at least. They're not especially weak, they're, but they can be somehow attacked. Also, they might end up being exchanged. The main factor is that white has the two bishops. And for this reason, this kind of position might not be as to everybody's taste with black. Let's say I would prefer to play with white, although, of course, the position is very close to equal. Um, yes, uh, positionally speaking, some c4 and exchanging the c for the d pawn might lead to an advantage for white. Uh, nevertheless, let's remember chess is concrete, so we will need to work out the details as well. White will have to castle first and so it will not be very easy. Also, when c4 is played, perhaps d4 is an idea for black. And white is nevertheless left with a c and a pawn. Um, well, hard to say, but this might, might have been a reason for black to try and choose a different path. Um, yeah, another game went like this. Here, here. This was the previous Nakamura game. Uh, it was, uh, I think, a rapid game, but still, black is okay here. Uh, although I'm not sure about this knight e4, which was probably not needed. Anyway, this position should be quite all right for black, but once again, two bishops for white. I think the other version might be slightly more challenging. That's perhaps a small improvement that we should be free in this line. And well, again, I didn't find advantage. I'm just offering uh, some ideas how to play for, for something at least. Uh, it will be way too hard to just destroy Black's position. Black is very solid. So rook d1 is the main move. And here, uh, again, rook d8 was played in a very high level game. Again, it's uh, Caruana with black against Carson. It worked out in that game, also draw. Uh, but this is the line. I don't think this was actually played in the, in the original game. But I think it was Aronian with white who came up with this at some point. And here we have this queen a5. Okay, the position is very strange. If you've never seen it, it's rather surprising. Uh, so white has an extra piece, but he's not well coordinated. And well, preparation shows that the position is not so easy. Uh, anyway. This is becoming a popular line because the engine gives it as equal. Some strong players played it. And well, I cannot say I refuted it, but my advice for you will be to more or less always enter this position if 
your opponent is happy with it because practically speaking it's a very very hard position to play with black uh, of course if white knows nothing this will be maybe embarrassing but if you just make some logical move like this everything is absolutely forced so black has to play like this let's see what position we are reaching White's problem is, of course, that the knight is pinned. And now let's just consider this position with, let's say, a human eye. So black is a pawn up. And there was a lot of action over the last few moves. Both structures are not perfect, of course but let's say blacks is less perfect the pawn f6 is a target and it's under attack and well the whole central position is rather unstable the knight of b4 is pinned of course he's got an extra pawn with but with double pawns everywhere so this is actually much harder to play with black in my opinion and white is running zero risks of course, the position, objectively speaking, is equal, uh, but practically speaking, it's not the same to have a position where you can allow yourself a little mistake or a position where you have to play everything absolutely right just to make a draw. And white's position is much safer from this point of view. Now, f5, normal, knight f3, f6, knight to h4, this is the tough play. Of course, black cannot really hold on to the extra material. And well, this position is really, really scary. Unfortunately, I cannot prove an advantage for white. You can go deeper by yourself and have a look. Uh, I thought it would be useful anyway to have sort of an assessment over the practicalities of the game as well. Uh, yes, the king is weak. I think this is a nightmare. I mean, if you're a grandmaster with black, with good preparation, you will probably hold it. At any other level, I think black is going to lose. Because uh, really, all you need is one inaccurate move and white will have huge opportunities that are easy to play. And that's also very important because it's not only about having opportunities, it's about how uh, strange, how unusual they are. Here, white plays very direct and very simple. And it's hard to go wrong, really. So, yeah, if somebody is willing to enter here, of course, go for it. Um, unfortunately, however, soon after this was discovered, Black started playing this rookie aid position, which is similar to the newer Nakamura idea, which we will see in the main line. Uh, of course, the rook on e8 is helping black push e5. And well, this is more of a problem. Now, bishop g3 has been attempted. Knight e4, here, here, everything is kind of forced if white is looking for uh, an advantage. The, the rook stands well on d2 just because of tactical reasons. And now knight g5 is a move. Uh, queen take a3 is actually playable. This line is not so clear. I wish white had an advantage here, but I'm not sure. Doesn't look that way. Of course, it's a very concrete line. This queen c3 check allows black enough card to play uh, the game should be a draw um, but i also checked the more natural move bishop e7 which was already played and now this happened and black is actually just fine here this queen a3 looks a bit unstable but 
the queen has enough squares and black is doing all right. So unfortunately, this is not really much of an attempt for an advantage. So as far as I know, this rook e8 is a very valid move. And knight d2 is the main line, and we've got this crazy position. And well, this is this is unfortunately a very concrete computer line where black is okay. And well, and this one is much easier than the other one. Black will not need uh, to make tough choices after the theory is over. Uh, I haven't rechecked this one right before the lesson, <laughs> but so I don't remember here. Um, Will be bishop d3, not d4, and so some complications you can easily work out, work this out with a database and an engine. So this is the state of the theory in this position, unfortunately. So again, Nakamura might have some extra idea, uh, which led him to play rook e8 here. Um, I don't know yet. Uh, maybe we will see until he plays a game with white or somebody plays a game with white and proves some advantage in the queen a5 line. Uh, of course, in some positions, like I said, white has some advantage, but in some others, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe the reason or maybe maybe he had some, some reason. Anyway, rook e8 is also a decent move. Bishop g5. This is very logical play. We should be free. Take, take. So black's position is very reasonable, but of course white is better developed and a little more active, uh, which, which is something to work with. It doesn't mean that he has much of an advantage either. Now, this might be tricky. The pawn on b7 is uh, under attack. And my plan was with black was to play bishop e8. It could have been an improvement, uh, but this queen b3 is unpleasant. So rook a c8 was played. Bishop e3 was played now. And knight d4 happened. But unfortunately, black ended up worse in the complications. A possible improvement is playing safer like queen c7. But this position is, in my view, a bit unpleasant for black. Um, the structure in the center is symmetrical, but white's pieces are more active, so black uh, will either manage a couple of precise, accurate moves to uh, somehow, let's say, uh, even out the position of the bishops, especially the light square bishops, or he will be under pressure. So queen c7 might be a move, not sure, but it feels like this was a success for white. Um, even though in the beginning it didn't look like much, black was always like half a step behind and he still is in this position. Uh, queen c7 is what my engine recommended, but nevertheless, black is under some pressure here. So, yeah, this is all I can tell you in this line. Couple of nice directions. Unfortunately, there is one big question that is missing, and I don't know the answer to that. Uh, the queen a5 main line looks like if black is careful enough in choosing which line he wants, it should be okay. Uh, which is, well, understandable because the queen's gambit declined is a very serious opening, solid, played in top level. 
So uh, I think we are a bit optimistic in trying to refute it. Uh, nevertheless, I hope I gave you some something to work with in your games and well maybe soon we will find out if the top level guys found some advantage in the queen a5 main line as well so this is all about this queen's gambit i will move to the next one the screen will go dark There's an issue with sharing screen. Uh, I will do it again. Or maybe you can see now. Maybe it's just lagging a little bit. This is too weird. Yeah, I think my connection was lagging a little bit. I hope you can see a Sicilian on your screen. Can you please uh, let me know in the chat? Can you let me know in the chat if you can see the Sicilian on the board? Okay, let me go ahead and share screen again. All right. Bishop c5. Okay, this is of course a theoretical line, but I was surprised by what happened later in the game. E5. Oh, sorry, h6 first. E5. So here, bishop e6 is the normal move. Bishop b4 move. Of course, positionally speaking, black is doing very well in exchanging the bishop knight. Bishop c3 will create uh, double pawns for white. So this happened in the game. Take, 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 take. And now he played bishop e6. Rook d6. Rook c8. So white is a pawn up and he's got two bishops, 
but the pawn structure on the queen side is spoiled and he really has too many weaknesses so black is actually easily okay here he moves simple and he will later recover the sacrificed pawn white really doesn't have any way to to make use of the extra pawn and those two bishops are not that active the bishop on g2 is actually waiting to enter the game so this happened before pressure center and the rook is ready to switch to a4 so this happened castle the monster is protected on the active side, but black is absolute here. So he worked out very well in this game. So I was wondering because this bishop b4 shouldn't really be a good move. And the reason is this knight b5. So I reject this, of course take take rook a2 okay so far everything is obvious and forced rook take d6 and rook a4 doesn't embarrass white b5 is just hanging with check so castling is the only way to play rook d2 bishop d6 okay so far everything is quite forced um, again material is equal what is the and uh, pawns on b5 and b7 are doubled and potentially weak uh, however let's put in a few details the correct move is f3 in my opinion quite an important detail here Stay once um, this way, the pawn on e4 is solid, it's protected, and the bishop would later go back to f1. Also, this is stopping any jump with knight g4, which we will see is an issue in a different line. So white here has a very compact pawn structure, everything is well protected, and the pawn on b5 is still under some pressure. Queen c4 is logical, so black managed to improve the pawn structure but c3 nice move protecting the pawn on b2 and white is very very comfortable he has got two bishops which is a potential advantage but it's actually it's actually just an advantage uh, bishops are good long term here the position is not super open nor super closed which means that white can improve the position and later for a break and nice a different try was rook fd1 but here black um, has a concrete way to play which is knight g4 again queen c4 queen c4 pawn takes c4 c3 leads to basically the same position but knight g4, concrete, tactical. Now two moves, very, very funny position. I will show you why I find it funny. Queen b6. Bishop immediately on e7, we will see the difference. So queen b6, bishop f1, logical. And now there's tactics. Now the problem is queen take rook take b2, uh, rook take b2, queen take d6, and the bishop on d6 is not very well placed. But this move is brilliant. Bishop c5. Genius. Queen c6. And this position, I know it's surprising. It also took me a bit of time uh, to figure out like and queen and white bishop <laughs> so material is 
more or less equal, let's say, and black has nothing. This is some way to play, of course. You might have to worry about this king, which is weak, and also about the b-pawn, so white isn't really able to coordinate and win. Here we Sorry for that. A bit closer to me. So I was saying this position should be equal, although it's very strange. Uh, the material imbalance is very unusual. I'm going back. previous position here. So this is where we chose to play bishop d6. Instead, there's a move bishop e7. And now, the right move is queen a4, uh, sorry, rook a4. Because now the bishop on e7 is badly placed. Queen d6, rook d4. Uh, the same tactic, Tactic worked on b5. Uh, so b5, b4 also gives black a lot of can't, can't play suddenly. Uh, it's tactical reasons the bishop on e7 being hanging and the pawn on c2 being under pressure. Queen takes c2 is a serious counterplay move by black. So here, here, and in this position everything comes by force. Also very important that this d3 works because white almost managed to stabilize the position. Of course, c take d3, queen c1 is a horrible blunder. And queen c7, rook c7, the bishop on e7 is under attack. So c3 only move. And again, amazing knight e5. Okay, now if nothing happens, queen d6, bishop d6, knight c4 is a fork. So white is going for the tactic, and knight c4, only move. Bishop c7, knight take d2, and the pawn on d3 is suddenly very powerful because all of the heavy pieces have been traded. Pin. And this is a very, very funny line. Like I said, this position is just equal, <laughs> which is kind of unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> so many tactical ideas, and in the end, everything is just even. Uh, so, for all of these reasons, this rook fd1, which is the most logical move in the position, shouldn't be played. Instead, we have this little improvement f3, stopping knight g4 and keeping the position more stable. And this looks like an advantage to white because he's now safer and he will later improve the position. And hopefully, that bishop pair will be important later in the game. So of course, we're not talking about a huge advantage, but nevertheless, it's a much more pleasant position for white. Um, from a practical point of view, I can see less point, uh, even assuming that all that I said is actually true. Uh, practically speaking, white might know that this small F3 move causes some slight issues. And you know, in a practical game, you might get away with with your slight risk in the opening like it actually happened to him so this was a practical success for black but not a theoretical success in my opinion or at least you would need some little extra idea in this line as well in my opinion so your screen will go dark i'm going on to the next position.
So this is a game between two of the top women players. The Catalan. The Catalan has come back to being popular again in recent times. And knight bd2 here. Okay, interesting sideline. This game was mostly preparation for black, either preparation or very nice intuition over the board. Um, and to be very well prepared also. So I'm assuming she might have at home. I don't know. Uh, so let's have a look at this position. White sacrificed all of the center, all of the pawns in the center. But the bishop on f3 is very strong. And the knight on c4 is developed as well. So black is lagging in development, which means black is taking some risk. Now, uh, there was an old game where black played bishop d6, and it kind of worked out. Um, nice move here is b3. Uh, the point is that uh, knight take d6, c take d6, kind of idea is very useful to have. So this bishop d6 is actually played just once in an old game. And with the white pressure, uh, if white got a free move, perhaps bishop f4 would be to five in the future, pressuring the pawn on b7. So this is a critical position. It's not really mainline theory, let's say, but nevertheless critical. If you're here with black, I think you will be feeling some pressure. Now, normally bishop e7 had been played. Knight a5, backing the pawn on b7. Rook b8, bishop f4, I believe, is already pretty uncomfortable. Black is probably already losing material. Knight d5 is logical. e4, temporarily blocking the bishop, chasing the knight away. And now, it was played once. And this is all for sure. What should be happy here? It's very hard to protect the pawn on c7, or just impossible to protect the pawn on c7. Um, the game was e5 and some slightly less accurate. This, nevertheless, uh, this play is e3 according to my engine is like improvement, but any assessment is that white has more than enough composition and black is under significant pressure. So this work out very well for black in that game. This game shows the great improvement, knight d5. Okay, it's a simple logical move, of course, and there is a huge difference compared to the other line. Oh, by the way, sorry, I think I forgot to show you yeah, this move, knight f6, bishop f4. Such a case for the and equal, and it's easy to point out that what is more active, the bishop on c8, isn't taking part in the game. So different decision might be P6. Some practical resource to get rid of the knight on A5. E5. And now this is nice. The knight on C6 is worth a rook, which is what Black also considered 
But here, white is not only a pawn up, the knight on e6 can't be trapped, and it's actually putting pressure over black's position. Um, king d7, e6. This is the point. The knight enters the game again on c7, collecting material again. So black doesn't have real compensation for a pawn. Uh, BTK5 was also played, and this is also not satisfactory for, for black. Uh, white is entering with bishop c6, also check. Uh, the rook is kind of stuck in the corner for, for a while, but that's not too bad for, for white. He doesn't lose. Knight d5 set. This is the nice improvement. Black doesn't need to play bishop e7 first. The very important difference is that when e5 plays, the knight will b6, challenging the knight on c6. Is it only one of you or that for a beach in action? So I'll just repeat. This knight b6 challenges the knight on c4, and if knight a5 is b4 is pretty accurate, in my opinion. Uh, so it's happened, and e5. Of course, this is super critical. Uh, the bishop on f3 is open, and now bishop c5 much more active than on e7. The bishop is actually very well placed on c5. It's blocking the c file and keeping solid with the pawn on b6. Now, actually, black has an extra pawn, which means that next she can play bishop d7, sacrificing. And if bishop take b7, let's say rook 7 and also just equal, and suddenly a more at the same time, not that exciting. So, smart black is, of course, preparing to give up the material, which is a good technique when you have a material advantage but positional issues. Nevertheless, bishop e3, strong move. The only way to fight for advantage for white. And here, unfortunately, black has to take. Otherwise, the pawn structure will be spoiled. Let's say we sacrifice a pawn on b7, but we also allow bishop take c5, b take c5. This will be pretty unpleasant. The pawn structure will be, uh, well, weaker. So. Now white also has double pawns on the e-file. They're not especially bad. They can hardly be attacked over the next few moves. So white has the advantage and a lot of compensation. Of course, the idea is rook ac1, rook c7, entering on the seventh rank and preventing black's development of the bishop on c8. So it's really important for black to take care and stop the threat. E7, sacrificing the pawn on b7 once more, and preparing to oppose with bishop c6 at the same time. Now, if nothing happens, black is, of course, happy. So, rook d6 was played. Very important on rook a c1, bishop c6 would be a horrible mistake due to rook take c6. 
on text is six, bishop text is six. Okay, I will just move it on the board for fun. Now the rook is attacked, so king e7 is the only move. There's no square for a king. King f8 loses the rook, and king e8 actually loses both of the rooks to rook a7. So for this reason, playing bishop c6 would be horrible, but black has a strong rook c8. Simple move. And it looks like everything is okay for black. The position looks to be equal. White will, of course, be able to recover the material in different ways, but she can't prove an advantage. So rook ac1 is apparently not the best move. It's the most natural to It just doesn't work. So stronger is rook d6, actually in the game. Bishop c6, only move. If white was able to collect both the pawns on b6 and b7, of course, she would be very happy. And now accurate move, rook ac1. Stronger than recovered the material immediately because the pawn isn't running away in the case. The castle. So white achieved a lot in this game, but this ending looks to be a draw. Now, this is because white has some weaknesses on the king side, those double pawns. And white is only a pawn up in a rook ending where, well, with enough technique, black should be okay to hold. Um, quite impressive game. Unfortunately, this really wasn't much to discuss later. Uh, black's king becomes active, and well, this will be now a lesson about rook endings. Uh, this is not especially hard to hold for black because white simply has too many weaknesses and the pass pawn is, uh, well, very far from the queening square. Whenever the pawn will move, black will start collecting pawns and well, a pawn doesn't queen by itself. So the ending should, I think, I'm not sure if this was all preparation for black, but it looks like a decent solution for the line, provided that you're confident enough in your technique in a rook ending upon time. Uh, otherwise, actually in this line, white was having some pressure. I mean, it seems like the only way for black to, to escape. Uh, or we can play, of course, a different line altogether. That's another issue. I hope this was clear for everybody. I uh, will move on to the next game. This is sort of a sideline, of course. Uh, White is very ambitious. Uh, she's claiming that having those two bishops will lead to some advantage. Of course, this is also very risky because black is developing very quickly. And, well, these two pawns, c4 and c5, are strangely placed, uh, but that's okay. Uh, black will either play b6 or d6, and the c5 pawn will be exchanged. 
uh, which is okay for both colors. So B4, logical move. And well, actually E5, very logical, but risky, really risky. Now, actually the accurate move is Queen D3. Uh, it's similar to what happened in this game that I'm going to show you now, A4, where Queen C5, A3 led to great initiative for white, uh, two bishops and the leading development. And now uh, black's queen is running all over the board. The king on E8 is unsafe. So this is a nightmare for black, uh, which was enforced. Black here has an opportunity not to take on C5. So what I meant is that if instead of A4, white played queen D3, the next move, sorry, uh, D6 would not be that effective because here black really needs this move knight d4. And of course with the queen on d3, the knight would be hanging and without the knight e4, the pawn on d6 will be lost. So, so more move a4. Uh, so this is obvious play for black, which means that the pawn on b4 is safe for the moment, or at least relatively safe. Um, actually, my sister played against Gurevich a game in this line a few months ago, uh, but Gurevich played a3 instead of b4, maybe afraid of the push with a5. And she did okay anyway with black. Uh, as we will see, black is nevertheless very active. So here, queen e7 was played once. It's a simple game. So I consider X play an improvement. She just castled immediately. It should be two, d6. This will be the same also with the queen on e7, but now we will see that the queen might put b6. Queen b6 is already a nice move here, already putting pressure. c5, e5. The pawn on e5 will be under strong attack, and of course, white has very nice compensation. So the game went differently. Here, bishop e6, making sure that it's developing. That's wise. Bishop e2, and now queen b6. Knight b d7. I think this was uh, in my little analysis. The coordination is very logical. Uh, the knight on d7 is perfectly placed to protect black's center, and all of black's position is pointing against the pawn c4. Um, black is good, simply. The knight will go to b6 if needed. The game was a little more risky, so I considered this knight bd7 as an improvement. Because uh, here, knight a6 was played. And this is not as accurate. The knight on e6 uh, isn't bad, because it's putting pressure against the pawn on b4, but black lacks a little bit of harmony in this setup. Uh, it's also a matter of taste, I guess. It's hard to explain, but you know, having a knight on a6 to me doesn't look like the perfect way to when we can regroup in a more, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to say. Let's say I will put knight on, B, on d7 and put pressure on c4. It's very similar play, but I'm, I'm always afraid to get 
put my pieces in unpleasant squares. So I wouldn't put them down in six, even though it's playable. This happened, black is active enough. Another counterplay move is a five, but probably more risky. So rook c1, h6, and now white should have continued the fight by queen b3, hoping maybe to get queen b1, which either kicks the knight or forces black to play f5 uh, in a way that is not as good at this as it was in the previous line where the White might have a small advantage. Uh, like I said, I don't really recommend you this line for white because of the previous improvement. Uh, but here, white did get an advantage in this game. I believe this would have been a bit more unpleasant for black to play because the knight is still on a6. I'm still anxious about it. And white does have a full time for of course, it's not a huge problem for black. Queen b1, knight f6 is definitely playable. Uh, although white will maybe later continue bishop d2, rook f d1, maybe the bishop back to e1. White is making some coordination and improving the position little by little. Uh, again, not a big advantage, but more pleasant for white. I'm also very happy that with those two bishops, if white can keep safe and improve later, they might become useful. So the game, knight d2 is that repetition like this, which was accepted. And well, they just repeated it and the game was wrong. Um, it's a game, of course. Uh, it's a shame that White didn't find this plan with Queen B3. Otherwise, of course, we would have seen uh, more more White. Uh, the end of the lesson to sum up all the things we learned in this lesson. Uh, sure. So, okay. Uh, this is a discussion between bishops and blacks immediate counterplay against the center. The point being that somehow we put pressure against those advanced pawns on c4 and b4, and the nice coordination for black would be like this, with the knight possibly going to b6. The pawn on d6 is always a jump to four. And of course, white keeps those two bishops, which is a potential danger for black, but black is fine. Um, okay, also repeating, uh, we have seen a Sicilian where white uh, faced with a pin, bishop b4 had this opportunity to jump on b5, and over there, a very important point was to play f3 prophylaxis and make sure that our center was safe. And we've also started with some little review of what is going on in the Queen's Gambit with Bishop f4, uh, where my conclusion was that Black is doing okay provided that he plays the queen a5 main line with rook e8, very importantly. And basically, I was also advising you that over there, if your opponent is, instead of 
laying the rook e8 line, laying the rook d8 and the peace sacrifice that nevertheless white should be happy to enter and play that position even though it's objectively equal. Um, not sure what else we've checked. Also having trouble remembering all the things that I said and the things that I didn't say. I don't get to show everything. Ah, yes, we've also seen this important line in the Catalan where Danidze found this important technical idea to play knight d5 uh, in the knight bd2 and knight xc4 line and she was able to reach an ending a pawn down with the rook ending. So, yes, I think this is all. I had a good time and that you learned a few things. Of course, probably not all of this is useful for your own games, but it's good to know something. And, well, I hope at least some of it is part of your repertoire. Bye-bye.